What was that episode of Star Trek? Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant. Today we're going to conclude our review of Sennheiser's latest generation of wireless mics, embodied in the pairing of their new EW500G4 film wireless kit using the MKE2 lav and their highly regarded 600 shotgun mic. Now, last week, Claudia and I conducted our distance and outdoor sound tests down at the Jersey Shore. Hey, I'm Claudia. <laughs> And there is Wildwood all the way down there. The bottom line from where I sit is that they both sound fantastic and they both have tremendous range. Now this guy is the Sennheiser MKE 600. We thought this would be a pretty great environment for challenging ambient sound conditions and the Sennheiser kit worked beautifully all the way out to and a little bit past by our calculations its range specification of 100 yards. Of course so much of a mic's actual sound derives from placement, and in this case, the use of rye coat overcovers underneath our outer garments, which proved an excellent complement to the gear. I'll put up the link somewhere for, for that video. Uh, the flip side is that the beach isn't a very good place to test interference rejection. Now, I'd love to be able to wake up, walk out the door, and test the gear in the ultimate environment for that, my hometown of New York City and I'm working on it. But in the meantime, we used our patent pending, no, it's, it's not, walk down the hill test from our house, which while still not very good for interference rejection either, hold that thought, is pretty good at distinguishing among systems abilities to send and receive through obstructions. In this case, trees, homes, earth, road, as I walk down the hill from the Batcave. All right, so we're walking away from the house. We've got the G9 with the 8 to 18 Leica F4. I'm using a little Pixie tabletop tripod combination handle. And uh, I'm not as good at this as Claudia is. She's much more steady than I am. We used this same test when comparing our 2017 Audio Gear of the Year winners, a three-way tie among the Sony UWPD-11, the Roadlink Filmmaker Kit, and Sennheiser's own AVX. And I like this test. I'll put up a link to that video as well. Finally, over the course of this video, you will be hearing all of these mics for comparison. The Sennheiser MKE-2 Lab with SK-500 body pack and EK-500 receiver, the SKE-600 shotgun, our reference standard, the Sony UWP-D11, our value standard, the Roadlink Filmmaker, and our reference standard shotgun, the Rode NTG4+. All but the Filmmaker will be feeding our Tascam DR70D simultaneously, while the Rode Filmmaker will be running through Panasonic's XL... No, actually not. It'll just be running straight into the GH5. The one mic you won't hear, but definitely figures into a purchase decision if you're interested in these kinds of things, is the AVX system, but hold that thought. Let's cut to the chase. One, as always, just as I experienced when I owned Sennheiser's EW100G2 system years ago, Sennheiser builds compact, solidly constructed, great sounding, premium gear backed by many years of experience. Two, in form, function, and heritage, the G4 500 lav kit is very comparable to Sony's UWP. Basically, if you know either system's menus, you know somewhere between 95 and 99% of the others. If you appreciate the fit and finish of one, you'll appreciate the fit and finish of the other. If you appreciate the sound of one, you'll appreciate the sound of the other. Though, of course, different people hear and value different things. Listen for differences in noise floor, sibilance, warmth, treble, and bass especially. Listen for ambience like my spinning disk drives. I normally run my final audio through Isotope RX6, but not here, so you can listen for those nuances. Though I have to say, I prefer the form of Sennheiser's MKE-2. It is smaller, even fitting inside the Invisalive silicon mounting kit we sometimes use, if a bit more loosely than Rode's own lav. And silly thing really, except it's not. 
I like Sennheiser's MZ2 accessory kit for it. Hold this thought as well. Three. But with this said, of course, there are differences. While both systems allow you to change the batteries without first removing either uh, receiver or transmitter from the camera or talent, respectively, something the Roadlink unfortunately does not, the Sony's slick side axis battery tray is just a little bit faster and less obtrusive. While both systems have the same basic buttons, on, off, up, down for menu selection and set, and comparable screens, I prefer the Sony's more immediate accessibility to all of them. To turn on or off or set the system, you have to first open the Sennheiser's hinged door. Not a biggie, and maybe it's just a personal preference, as is sound quality with gear this good. On the other hand, while the Sennheiser and Sony are comparable when it comes to range, we concluded that the Sony fared better in our down-the-hill obstruction and line-of-sight test, retaining its title as our reference standard for it. The curious thing is that we award this distinction to the Sony because it dropped the signal altogether shortly after encountering consistent dropouts, clearly a design choice, whereas the Sennheiser continued to struggle for another dozen yards or so and through who knows how much wall, earth, asphalt, trees, etc. It's the kind of thing where if you're only looking at the sound meters while you're recording, which is a very bad idea, but I'm guessing you know this if you're watching this particular video, you can be lulled into thinking everything's okay when it most certainly is not. Four, moving on to the MKE 600 shotgun. If you like Rhodes and DG4 Plus shotgun, which we do, You'll like Sennheiser's MKE 600. Both have similar designs, dimensions, finish, and manual of arms. Both sound good, but more importantly, both are battery powered. The NDG4 Plus has a built-in rechargeable lithium-ion battery. The Sennheiser uses a replaceable AA. But in either case, the advantage is that you don't need phantom power. This makes either one especially useful and appropriate when using hybrid cameras like we do, yet both can draw on phantom power when it is available. Fascinating. The MKE 600 with Ore Fur at 415 is ever so slightly less expensive than the Rode with identical Ore Fur at 420, which 5 makes the MKE 600 pricing a bit of an anomaly because Sennheiser gear is usually much more expensive. So let's talk about price. The Sennheiser G4 500 film kit, which consists of the top end of their wireless lav line and SKP 500 plug-on transmitter for handheld mics, is priced at just about 1300 bucks. But let's hold that aside to consider lav systems alone, beginning with the EW500 G4 wireless lav kit with MKE2 at 900 bucks for a set. The thing is, Sennheiser also sells the EW112 PG4 kit with lower spec 100 series receiver, transmitter, and ME2 Mark II mic at 600. You can buy the Sony UWP D11 kit for the same $600 or the Roadlink kit for $400. We're talking savings of $300 to $500, which is enough to buy a second Rode and keep the change or get you halfway to a second Sony. Again, compared to the lowest priced and spec Sennheiser. What's the difference between the 112 and 500? Well, I'll put it to you this way. How many more channels and how much more power do you need? because that's the difference. Hold that thought. While the full 500 film kit is priced at 1300 bucks, you'll find Sony's comparable version, a UWP D16 configuration for not much more than half at just about 800. If you add in the MKE 600 with that Ore Fur at 415, you're talking about 1700 bucks for the Sennheiser gear we tested, but 1500 bucks will buy a differently configured UWP D16 kit, including not only a plug-on transmitter and 18RL broadcast handheld mic, but a second wireless lav kit altogether, on top of the one already included. Now, Rode doesn't bundle their products the same way, so we have another anomaly. Two Rodelink lav kits, plus the Rodelink plug-on kit, which includes a third receiver, plus the NTG4+, plus, We'll set you back 1750 a few bucks more than the Sennheiser, though, of course, now you've got a third wheel receiver, which you can sell off or keep it for when you want to mic three people simultaneously, which makes it a bargain once again compared to our Sennheiser. Or, finally, get a Rode news shooter kit with handheld omnidirectional interview mic, 
rather than the NTG4 Plus for 630, plus either 400 or 800, 1030 or 1430 for one or two labs, which makes the road setup dramatically less expensive than our G4 500 system, but surprisingly close to an all Sony kit with the Sony's far superior obstruction reception, distance reception, and better handling. Does your head hurt yet? Because mine does, and we're not done. That's because six, when we turn to interference rejection, things get really interesting. Both the Sennheiser and Sony use traditional UHF frequencies and technologies, while the Rode uses 2.4 gigahertz digital transmission. The Rode employs the same kind of automatic frequency hopping that 2.4 gigahertz wireless phones use, which in turn is the same kind of technology used by our military, which in turn is a technology invented by, now get this, this is absolutely true, just in case you didn't know it, Hedy Lamarr, the Hollywood golden era actress. How do you like them apples? Hedy Lamarr or not, what this means is that, at least in my personal experience, the roads are better, simpler, surer, for managing interference than the Sony or Sennheiser because they automatically switch frequencies. I've experienced this myself, which is one reason why I switched from an EW100G2 setup years ago for the Rhodes, which to my way of thinking makes the Rhodes an even bigger bargain and better fit for vloggers, news crews, and small indie productions. Think, for example, on the floor interviews at Photokina or NAB, where distance is not an issue, but interference and most likely price are. Thus, slam dunk for the roads. That is until seven. You consider Sennheiser's other filmmaker system, the AVX. Operating at 1.9 gigahertz instead of 2.4, it uses the same frequency hopping technology as the road. Has novel and in my experience, unmatched automatic leveling is dramatically smaller Sounds a bit better, though the road is just fine, and has created receivers literally the size and practically shape of your thumb to plug directly into OEM XLR mic adapters from Panasonic and Sony, or if you've got a camcorder directly into the XLR inputs, though there are other ways to skin the cat. Yeah, hold this thought too. But the AVX system ain't cheap, and it doesn't do as well, nor does the road, for obstruction reception as the Sony or the Sennheiser 500. So. Let's talk about these prices. A single AVX lav kit using the lower spec, but just fine ME2 Mark II lav clocks in at 700 bucks. The MKE2 version is 900, but let's set the MKE2 based systems aside for now when every dollar counts and the use cases are not at the extremes. An AVX bundle consisting of a full ME2 Mark II lav kit plus their AVX42 handheld transmitter, that's an omnidirectional mic with built-in transmitter, pretty slick, costs an even grand. So one receiver, two different kinds of mics. A second full ME2 Mark II kit would bring that total up to 1700, though you'd now have three mics for two receivers, which again, for me, is fine because I'm unlikely to use all three at once. Or right now, you could get a $200 gift card from B&H for a bundle, which adds to this mix a case and a Copal two-channel mixer, functionally equivalent to a Sony or Pani XLR mic adapter, using 3.5 millimeter inputs instead, which would bring the price of a pair of AVX ME2 Mark II lav kits plus that AVX42 omnidirectional mic with built-in transmitter to 1,635 bucks. And you wouldn't have to spring for anywhere between 50 and 400 bucks on a switcher or an XLR mic adapter if you didn't have one already or if you weren't using a dedicated cam with built-in XLR inputs. Then again, you could just get two AVX ME2 Mark II labs for $1,400 and call it a day, again, if you already have an adapter or you're using a dedicated cam with those XLR inputs to begin with. Which is what I'm thinking about for Photokina because even though we already have three lav kits, they require, unlike a pair of AVX labs, a cage. And while we really, really like our small rig setup for the GH5 and use it all the time in the back cave, we're using it right now, I'd rather travel lighter. Of course, 
a pair of Tascam DRL-10 body pack recorders with labs for 400 bucks all in for the two of them is way cheaper, way lighter, way smaller. Which means what precisely when considering Sennheiser's G4 500 film kit and SKE 600 mic? Well, I think it means this. If you are a high-end film or theater production where range is critical, spectrum is critical because you will likely be using a pile of mics. You will typically not face obstructions. You are concerned about interference from a crew or audience full of cell phones and Wi-Fi devices. Sennheisers are already highly regarded and well understood on set, on stage, and you are all but certain to have dedicated sound professionals on hand. The 500 series can make a whole lot of sense. Differences in cost between the 500 and lower spec Sennheisers, or anything else for that matter, like these, amount to nothing in these kinds of scenarios, where instead it's about ultimate sound quality and a well understood, established, and embraced manual of arms and set of procedures. In high pressure situations like these, there's no time to futz around with a new system, let alone a new way of doing things, especially if they can create other challenges for you. Errors here can cost a lot more than the difference in the cost of microphones. Though, to be fair, the Sony UWP system in my book is every bit as good, in some ways better, and is used by plenty of professionals as well. And which, by the way, you can get as a single chassis dual channel receiver along with two UWP labs with two transmitters for just under $1,300 especially appealing to Sony shooters with cameras that have the multi-interface shoe, or those of us who don't have or want the added cost and weight of an XLR mic adapter, though you can't dial in left and right volume adjustments the same way. But if you are at all like me, budget conscious, a one or two man band doing pretty much everything yourself, I'd look first to the simpler, easier to use, easier to get better results, more narrowly targeted to people like us, Rode Filmmaker and Sennheiser AVX system, or those little task cams. Now, I already have the $400 Panasonic XLR mic adapter, so what I say next will be colored by that fact. Among these systems, Sennheiser's AVX is very expensive, closing in on twice the price of the Rode, 700 bucks versus 400 for a single lav system, 1400 versus 800 for a dual lav system, and four times the price of the little Tascam DRL-10 body pack recorder lav systems. That's not chump change in this part of the market. Though the gap between the two wireless systems narrows considerably when you add a handheld mic into the mix. The thing of it is, I always prefer labs to any other kind of mic. If you're just getting into high quality audio for yourself as a vlogger, heck, get a Rode Smart Lav Plus for under a hundred bucks, record on your smartphone, and sync and post because these days it's so easy and costs nothing and sounds great. If money is super tight, but you need to mic two or more people, your next step could actually be getting additional Rode Smart Labs and using other people's phones as recorders too. Just remember to set them to airplane mode. But also, recognize the risks you take by not being able to monitor audio in real time. You won't have to worry about interference once you start recording, as long as you first confirm reception over the appropriate distance, triple check to make sure they're all in airplane mode, and triple quadruple check batteries. Which is why the DR-10Ls become interesting at this point. Because unlike phones, they offer dual track recording specifically to address clipping and are dedicated devices over which you have control. With, as it turns out, super long battery life from a simple AAA. But you still can't monitor them in real time. Suboptimal. And while they're just about three times the price of a smart lav plus, they're half the price of where I'd suggest you actually go instead, a pair of road links, which, as you will recall, is what we actually did a few years ago. Although, if you're perfectly comfortable using a single handheld mic, 
I'd look at the standalone frequency hopping $630 road new shooter kit or $800 handheld Sennheiser AVX kit. I'd personally lean toward the AVX because of its smaller size and superior auto leveling technology, though you might want to pony up an extra 50 bucks for a second transmitter battery. They're custom and only have about four hours capacity. But you're giving up very little else in this case by going for the road instead. You could also look at the $600 Sony EWP-D12 wireless handheld mic with built-in transmitter and the same workhorse URX P03 receiver we've been talking about. It is surprisingly the bargain among these three. Still, of all the gear we've discussed today, and if your use cases, style, and budget can handle it, I'd put the AVX at the top of the list for simplicity, reliability, portability, and consistency of results. Altogether, it is the AVX2 lab setup that does the best job for me, for my use cases, of reducing the number of things that compete for my attention and anxiety the moment before I hit record. And I'm willing to pay for that. In the end, I'd leave the 500 series to the big boys, but your mileage may vary, and that's just fine. These are all stellar pieces of kit. If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, join the conversation in the comments section below. You guys are just so sharp and so generous. Just wow. Share, create a playlist, consider supporting our work by using our no cost to you affiliate links down below or making a contribution directly via the PayPal link down below. As always, we thank you for it. For Three Blind Men and an Elephant, I'm Hugh Brownstone. See you next time.